to my channel. For today's video I have a weekend reading vlog for you guys and hopefully this is going to be the first of weekly weekend reading vlogs. I have said that before, I know I have and I didn't follow through but this time I would really like to have a weekend reading vlog go up every week so you've always got a little bit of content on what I'm reading each week and also it'll help me keep a bit of structure if I know just every weekend I'm filming a vlog and that'll give me a video for every Wednesday for you guys to watch. So that is the plan, we'll see if I follow through with it, hopefully, fingers crossed this time I do. For this weekend, due to current circumstances I do not have a lot planned at all, it's probably not surprising. We do have some drinks for night, it's my brother's girlfriend's birthday, she lives with us so there's no to and fro in with um, different households or anything like that, nothing to worry about in terms of Covid. We all live together but we are going to have a little party just in the house, us guys, just having some drinks, playing some games and just celebrating her 21st birthday as well as we can. So you might see a little bit of that, you might see me getting ready for that. I don't know, see how I feel when it comes to it. Apart from that, all my plans are to read. And the book that I'm reading this weekend is The Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Harrow. I have heard amazing things about this book, particularly from my friend Maddie. She has got spoops reading it and she's also got me reading it because she says it's amazing. And I'm hoping I will feel the same. It sounds incredible. It is on my January TBR, which is good because most of the books I've read so far this month have not been on my January TBR because I am such a mid reader. But if you don't know already, I am taking part in the Friends Readathon hosted by Tyra and the Books this January. And it is basically made up of different prompts depending on different characters. So for each character, there is four prompts all based on iconic quotes of theirs. So for this book, this is Chandler. Chandler's quote is, I tend to keep talking until someone stops me or something along those lines and the prompt is to read a book over 500 pages and this one is like 515 I think or something around that mark so it fits the prompt. This book basically follows three sisters called James Juniper, Agnes Amaranth and Beatrice Belladonna who join the suffragists of New Salem. Obviously they are part of the women's movement, they are trying to win votes for women but they also have ancestry of witches so in this part it says at the beginning in 1893 there's no such thing as witches but there used to be and there is talk of how witches were around in old Salem and were obviously hung and burned and things like that. As far as the society is aware there are no more witches but of course there are and the Eastwood sisters are three of them and I think there are other characters that also have witchy vibes as well and it's basically going to be about them perusing the suffragist movement while also bringing into play some of their witching I think is how they describe it in the book. So yeah, I'm really excited to read this. I'm really excited for the feminist element of it, to see more about the suffragist movement and to see how that is intertwined with witchcraft. I'm also really excited to see how all of the three sisters have different characters and see if they're individuals as well as being sisters. But yeah, and you will have seen I just vlogged a little bit because I was doing some reading sprints live on Katie's channel. Of course, I'll link her down below as well. And I did manage to read 100 pages within the reading sprints that we did, which is amazing. Makes me feel very productive already this weekend. That means like I'm a fifth into the book already, which is pretty good considering it's only Friday evening. So yeah, the plan is to try and read this in its entirety over the course of the weekend. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that or not, but I would really like to finish this by Sunday. Sunday night. Hopefully that will be the case but we all know what I'm like with my false promises. So yeah I'm going to take a little break just now because we just have we have just got off of the sprint so I've been reading for a while. I'm going to take a little bit of a break, probably have some dinner and I also need to edit the video that is going up tomorrow night but I will get back to reading soon and give you a little update. Hello my loves. So it has been a little while since we last spoke. I have just been doing some editing and uploading for the video that is going up tomorrow night so that'll be the Saturday before this goes up. Um, I haven't done any more reading as of yet but I'm hoping to sit down now and get a good chunk done. Like I said I'm on like page 100 of The Ones in Future Witches so I do want to get a good bit read tonight if I can. I think what we're gonna do is maybe see if anyone's doing any reading sprints on YouTube and maybe put that on to try and help me get in the zone. If not maybe just an ASMR room or something like that but I feel like I need something to really like yeah just get me in the zone and get me into a good reading mood. I do also want to have a bath at some point tonight so yeah that's the plan for the rest of the night but I will check in with you again when I have more to say about the book. Hi friends so I have just finished part one of the book so I'm now on page 
131 and I am really really loving this book now I'm seriously getting into it I didn't realize that the three sisters were going to be like separated and kind of estranged at the start and then for the first part we see them come together again which has been so nice to see like they're like the sisters getting together again I also think that the witchcraft aspect ties together so well with the suffrage movement like there's so many there's so many things that link them but like female empowerment and sisterhood and sort of like rising up for their rights and things like that so I just think that ties together so nicely and it's also got some good commentary on suffragist versus suffragette and peaceful protest and how much sort of not violence but how much force is needed to sort of make a point and I know that was like obviously a huge issue in that time when there were suffragists and suffragettes and obviously they were in high contention with each other so it's interesting to see that coming out in the book particularly in terms of witchcraft and how that's seen as not as not very peaceful form of protest but yeah I'm just loving it like I said just female empowerment sisterhood all of that I just think it's amazing I'm loving reading it I think it's been done so well I also didn't know that there was going to be an LGBT romance in this which I am really enjoying I love when that comes out and surprises me especially in this time period I think it's gonna be really interesting to see how that progresses and yeah I am just loving it so I'm gonna go back and read some more now. Hello my friends so I am now on page 150 of the book and I have a feeling this is gonna be a five star read for me I am absolutely loving it just the whole like I said before feminist sisterhood aspect of it just has me I am living for it and I love how even though obviously we are looking at like a really serious topic here there's really good aspects of humour in the writing that just pop up throughout and they don't like drown out the message of the tale they're just they add to it so like my favourite sister at the moment is Juniper I just think she's so fierce and she's so set on fighting for what's right and she has a really dry sense of humour which I really appreciate so they were trying to come up with a name for the group that they have created for the witches and her suggestion was the ladies union of giving the bastards what's coming to them if that's not genius I don't know what is I just think like the historical writing in this is so good like Alex E. Harrell has clearly really sort of studied the time period and looked into a lot about it like fashion sense, the way the streets look, the way people interact with each other, the way like the occupation worked, everything and I just think it's really interesting all the little things that she puts in to show what it was like for women at the time which obviously really adds to the plot and really adds to why they're doing what they're doing and why it's needed and like one of the examples that she gave that just like popped up like I said there's just all these little not anecdotes but just little examples of what it was like in that time period and one of them was a woman who was pregnant and working in a factory was told like I'm assuming she'd have to work right up until the day that she pops and then she was told she'd get three days off after the baby was born and then as soon as the baby turned four years old it would have to come and work in the factory as well like it's just absolutely shocking and it really hits home why suff the suffrage movement was needed so much and I think it's really interesting how they look at how difficult it was for women to campaign for their rights just for like fear of losing their jobs, fear of being completely ostracised from society, fear of how their husbands would react because obviously there was nothing to stop domestic abuse at that time, it was kind of like expected and there's just like so many things in place to keep them in their place to make sure that they don't try and like fight against it because they've got so much to lose if they do and it's also so heartbreaking how they're like conditioned to fight against each other so like there's all these women judging the women who are part of the suffrage movement because they think that they are like risking their family and like risking being able to feed their children and things like that and you can totally understand their side because they've been conditioned to believe that way and there's so much in place to make them think that and it's just I think it's really well written and it really gets you like angry and really gets you on the side of the sisters and I just love it so much
friends, so it is now Sunday. I didn't do any vlogging or any reading at all yesterday. I ended up having quite a busy little day. I just spent time with my family. Obviously, like I said, we had drinks last night for my brother's girlfriend's birthday. And I just had a really nice family day. I didn't really feel like picking up the camera, which is absolutely fine. I did get a tad intoxicated, but I am feeling fresh today and ready to do a lot of reading. I have been doing a little bit this morning and I'm now on page 255. So I am like halfway through the book, which is not too shabby. And I am just absolutely loving this book like I feel like it's going to be a new favourite for me. At the moment it's definitely five stars and I really hope it continues to be that way. I just love the strong female characters and the sisterhood as I said before I'm just totally here for that and I think it's so well written. I love how the magic system works in this and I love how that is put together with the politics of the times. So you've got like a historical novel as well as the witchcraft and magic part of it and I think they're like interwoven really really well. I also love how the words for their spells come from like fairy tales and like old stories and things and the majority of fairy tales have women as like the damsel in distress or like the princess or whatever so I think it's really clever how they are using tales like that to give them the words to empower themselves and like fight back against oppression. I just think that's a really nice touch. I think Juniper is still my favourite sister. I just love how strong and fierce she is. I know she is like young, she can be quite naive and quite impulsive, I guess. But I just love her. I think she's a great character. I love all three sisters, but I think at the moment Juniper is still my favourite. And I don't know if I mentioned before that I find it really interesting, the whole idea of names. And I don't know if this is actually a thing or if this is something that's just in this book, but in it, basically your first name you're given by your dad and then you're then given another name, like your middle name that is given by your mother and everyone is called by the name that their father gives them. Like all women are called by that. So they're still, even in their name, they're still like the property of a man. And then once they start the sisterhood and everything they all start going by the names that their mother gave them which I just love it there's just so many amazing touches to this book and I just really hope it continues to be as good as it is right now. Hi friends and happy Monday. Yes this was supposed to be a weekend reading vlog but I think I'm going to continue on just because I just want to continue the vlog until I finish reading The Once and Future Witches. So hopefully that will be today. If not today, it'll be tomorrow. Um, I'm on page 325 at the minute. So I think I've got less than 200 pages to go. Yeah, less than 200 pages to go. So the plan is, it is like three o'clock just now, but my plan is to just read for the rest of the day and evening and just take a break for like dinner. So I should manage to read 200 pages in that time. I'm also going live with Rachel on her channel about seven o'clock to do some reading sprints. I think we're going to start at seven and go for a couple of hours. So that should mean that I get quite a lot of reading done then as well. So yeah, I'm hopeful that I'll finish the book today and then this can just be a long weekend reading vlog because yeah, I feel like there's not been much content so far and I don't want to just finish it now when I've not got much left of the book. I'd rather just read the whole book for this vlog. So that is the plan. <laughs> But yeah, still, I did read, I think I've read a little bit more since I last spoke to you and I'm still absolutely in love with this book. Like, I'm obsessed. Obsessed. I just want everyone to read it. My mum is not a reader, but I want her to read this book because I just know she will love it just for the feminist, witchy aspects of it. It's just amazing. I just cannot explain how empowered I feel when I'm reading this book, which may seem silly, but honestly, it just... Gives me the woman power vibes and I absolutely love that. I just think it's so well done and even though obviously it's about female power and everything it also shows like their vulnerabilities as well which I like because sometimes when there's like an archetypal strong female character they have like no weaknesses and no vulnerability at all which to me is just not realistic. I would rather see those vulnerabilities and a bit of fragility um, to add to the character and you do get that in this and you get characters that are questioning what they're doing and obviously characters getting completely punished for following the suffrage movement and also following sort of witch movement and joining the sisterhood and it's just a lot more realistic. So yeah I just think that is really well done and I've just realised on the front of this page it's actually got Lainey Taylor who 
you will know I now love because I'm reading The Daughter of Smoke and Bone series at the moment and I am obsessed with it. Her comment on here says a gorgeous and thrilling pian to the ferocious power of women. The characters live, bleed and roar. Which I just think is a perfect sum up of this book and how wonderful it is. So I'm just getting everything set up to do some reading sprints with Rachel. I've got my laptop there, my book. I think I'm just going to sit on these cushions <laughs> to read. I feel like that's going to be the best setup. And I've of course got an ASMR room on in the background. I'll obviously pause whenever I'm talking live on YouTube. But I really don't think I have too much left of this book at all. I'm on page like 380 so I've got 130 pages left or so so I'm kind of hoping I can get all of that read on these sprints. I'm not entirely sure how it's going to be possible, it's going to depend on how long we go for, how much reading we actually do and how in the zone I am. But I've got my fingers crossed that I will finish it tonight. So yeah, I'm just going to get myself sorted, get everything set up properly and hopefully get a good bit of reading done in these sprints. Okay, so we've just finished doing our reading sprints for this evening. I had so much fun. I actually got so much reading done as well. So I'm now on page, well, I've basically just finished part four. I'm on the last part. So it's page 499, I think. And I think the book is like 512 or something. So I've got less than 20 pages to go. But right now I am so tired. <laughs> I just want to go upstairs, make a hot chocolate, well, make a hot chocolate, then go upstairs and just chill with Brandon for a bit before I go to sleep. So I'm going to leave those pages for tomorrow morning and I will do my final little update once I've read those. I just finished it. <sighs> Honestly, this book has my whole heart. I love this book so much can't even describe it this is 100% a new fave and it takes a lot for me to say that because I as I've said before I'm quite lenient with my ratings so I feel like a lot of books get four or five stars just because I just get really excited when I read a book that I like and I just want to give it all the stars so yeah I'm very lenient this is like a five stars or more this is a fave and the same thing happened to me last year I think like the fifth book or so that I read was The Night Circus and that immediately became a favourite book and then this is like the sixth book that I read this year and it is immediately a new favourite. So it is a great way to start the year but yeah I just oh, I can't even describe how much I love this book. It was just so empowering, so feminist, so witchy in all the best ways. There's so much about sisterhood and not just sisterhood as in familial sisterhood but sisterhood between women. Um, I love the representation of motherhood and how strong a mother is for their child and the relationship between them and their child. I loved all the like interweaving of fairy tales and how that was used in here to give women power. Oh I just honestly I just loved everything about this book. It's amazing and if you want to feel empowered as a woman and uh, you like witches then read this book because it is phenomenal and now I need to read everything Alex E. Harrow because if it's even half as good as this I'm gonna be happy. But yeah that will conclude this weekend reading vlog. <laughs> Hopefully the first of many as I have said I do want to start doing them every single week so every Wednesday there should be a new weekend reading vlog as long as I stick to that because we all know what I'm like. But as always, if you did enjoy this video, then do please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe for more bookish content from me. I post new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. Comment down below any of your thoughts and feelings, and I will see you in my next one.